<clears throat> sound, sound, sound. Sound, sound. So, repolarization. Where are we here? We are at the top of that action potential. So, we're going down here, up, and back down again. Step three right here is plus 30, so right here. At that point, we have inactivation of the sodium channels, voltage-gated sodium channels. You already know how that happens. And we also have activation or opening, same thing for the potassium channels, of the potassium channels. This is going to cause potassium channels to open, the potassium flows out, and we have repolarization. Um, again, going to result in hyperpolarization just below rest until we have those potassium channels close, minus 90, right? That is below resting membrane potential. That's when those potassium channels close. Um, undershooting rest. Actually, minus 90, um, that's a potassium equilibrium potential. It's kind of going down until there's no longer a drive. The two electrical and chemical gradients are equal and opposite. But that potassium channels close and we slowly go back to rest. What causes this? How do we get from minus 90 to minus 70? What do you think? Our sodium potassium pump is going to reestablish resting memory potential from that um, slightly more negative. So that's the action potential. Let's do one more walkthrough here, looking at what happens to each of the two gated, voltage gated ion channels. So here's a schematic. Um, of those same changes you saw before. At rest, minus 60 for the cell. Again, you gotta be flexible. There's just different pictures. I like this picture. So resting membrane is minus 60. At that point, oops, just wanted that one. We've got a black pen to write that sodium, Channels are closed and potassium channels are closed. The sodium potassium pump is um, maintaining the resting membrane potential. There are sodium potassium leak channels, right? But we're not talking about those here. These are the voltage gated channels. Voltage gated. When we have our stimulus occur, do I have where? Okay, here, right here, this is our, let me actually draw it on the bottom. This time point right here is our depolarizing stimulus. So sufficient to reach threshold at the axon hillock. This is going to cause the voltage gated sodium channels to open. causing depolarization. Blup, like that, right? At the top up there are sodium channels are inactivated. And our voltage gated potassium channels open. Why? That's what they're designed to do. They open at about plus, plus 30. That's what um, the change that causes them to open. Okay. Potassium flows out until we go down and we hyperpolarize. At this point right here, 
what this is showing. This is showing the NA channel resetting or closing. In, in where we are right here, potassium channel is still open. Um, let's do one more. Where do I want to put this? Um, actually, I could do this one right here. It's probably just before that. Do right there. Our potassium channels close. Actually, less important, right? Because we have so many leak channels, anyways. Um, it's really the sodium potassium pump is bringing us back to threshold, as well as the fact that we've reached equilibrium. Potassium's not flowing out very much anymore, like below minus 90, because we're in electro, um, electrical equilibrium for potassium. Not much. So that's how, that's how we stop hyperpolarizing more than minus 90. Last thing to talk about is the refractory periods. Find another color here. We're gonna do two different refractory periods. There is a, an absolute refractory period. That is absolutely a refractory period. That's when you cannot generate another action potential, even if there's a super strong stimulus. That's gonna happen any time from the end of that stimulus um, to where depolar depolarization is beginning until sodium channel resetting. So sodium channel resetting is like somewhere down here, right? Um, but like I can make it like there. Absolute refractory period. This is due to the sodium channels, voltage gated sodium channels we're talking about are inactive. They're inactive. They cannot be activated. They're not closed. They're inactivated. You cannot open them with a strong stimulus, even when you're right here. So if you have another stimulus right here, it can't do anything because those voltage-gated sodium channels cannot open right now. They're not closed. They're inactive. This will be important. There is also a relative refractory period. That is going to occur after the absolute refractory period. And that's a time in which you can have another action potential, but it's going to take a bigger stimulus. This is because the membrane, well, look, what do you think this is due to? Look at this, look what's happening down there. This relative refractory period is because the membrane is hyperpolarized. So it's going to take a bigger stimulus than normal to reach threshold. Isn't that cool? I mean, that it makes sense, right? So it's, it's not an absolute no. It's like relatively, it's harder to do. Okay. So learning check. Say in your own words, recap what I just said. Try to do this as best you can without referring to your notes.